remember what got you. Focus on the fundamentals that we've gone over time and time again. And most important, don't get caught up thinking about winning or losing this game. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. This is the New Hampshire High School Basketball Show. This is a second coming. This is a call to arms. Your finest hour won't be wasted. The New Hampshire High School Basketball Show is brought to you by the New Hampshire State's Liquor Commission's Division of Enforcement. Right now, it's not about talent, it's about heart. It's about who can go out there and play the hardest, who can go out there and play the smartest. Now, they've been here before, so they're not going to give it to us. we got to go out there and we got to take it. And now your hosts, Pete Terrier. But I have a question, though. Those two foul shots at the end of the game, did you miss them? Or did you miss them? Not exactly a short question, is it? And Dave Haley from NHSportsPage.com. All season long, we play our game. Right now, you're playing there. When we step on the floor, every second that clock is ticking, we are pedal to the metal. We run the ball. We pressure the ball. And most importantly, we control the tempo of the game. Good morning and welcome to another edition of the New Hampshire High School Hoop Show. We do it each and every Saturday morning on two fine radio stations here in the Granite State News Radio 610 and 96.7. My name is Pete Terrier, along with my very fired up co-host Dave Haley from NHSportsPage.com. Dave, how are you? I'm ready to go. You're fired up. I mean, this guy walked in here this morning saying, let's get on the show right now. I'm ready. I got a lot to talk about. No one propped the door for me, and it's four degrees out. Sorry about that, company policy. (laughs) Hey, before we get into you uh, ranting and raving throughout the course of the next uh, 52 minutes, I got to say happy birthday to my oldest son, my first son, Zachary. Six years old today. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he's joining your daughter in the ranks of the six-year-old. And fantastic that he shares a birthday same weekend as Neil, the great Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond's birthday today, too? 27 years old, Neil is, yes. Sweet Caroline. He looks it. We thank you so much for, for bringing that handsome. one. Yes, there you go. Well, that's great for your son. So Very happy nice. birthday, Zach. A little birthday party uh, going on later, family thing, and uh, have some fun. So Chuck E. Cheese? Uh, no, not Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, PDT's. <laughs> a new place in town. You got a party? Are Over you there have, in Gosstown. Are you Just having a party? A little small gathering with the family, and then we'll do the uh, the kid uh, the kid thing in a couple of weeks. We uh, rented out uh, the Y oh, nice. in Gosstown, the Allard Center. Not the whole place. It's a huge place. And we'll do some stuff for them, uh, you know, get the kids uh, playing and uh, an active birthday party, you know, one of those uh, those modern birthday parties. Not like the old days when you just blew out the candles and got some presents, ate cake and ice cream. It, these birthday parties, as you know, have morphed over the years. Yeah. You get the party planner and everything. You should always be one kid ostracized during the party. It was always it was always tragic. <laughs> you know, it so a lot of games uh, going on around the state of New Hampshire. I was not at one of them. I had another celebration going on. My mom's uh, retirement party was last night over at the back room. So big weekend for the Terriers. Yeah, big uh, festive weekend. So I am uh, I'm kind of like uh, out there. The only thing I was able to do last night is follow on Twitter and have my wife go get off your phone, get off your phone. As I was following the action around the state of New Hampshire, you were at a game last night. Uh, the NHSportsPage.com video cameras at not one but two games. Yeah, last night you were at a Division Four game with. John Casty, and then uh, Jen Chick was uh, at a pretty good one, uh, Bishop Girton and Manchester Memorial. So why don't we get to all the scores from around the state last night with our scoreboard from Dave Haley. It's brought to you, as always, by our friends at the New Hampshire Liquor Commission's Division of Enforcement and that Buyers Beware campaign reminding all adults it's against the law to provide alcohol to minors, even if it's a birthday party, you know, something like that, six-year-old birthday party. They frown upon that kind of stuff. Don't do it. It's against the law. They do sell booze at Chuck E. Cheese, though, just as a public service. I know. Isn't that kind of... So So last night, was I did play-by-play, and it was my uh, probably my Waterloo. Um, John Kesty was shaking his head and doing one of these, I should have studied harder when I was a, a kid things, because he's standing next to me. I was openly comparing... Um, by the end, because you can't give me an open night, um, mic for an hour and a half, because it's just going to wander. 
It's just the way I am. And so by the end of it, I was comparing one of the the referees. Uh, I was talking to John, who was just not responding and shaking his head. I was comparing him to uh, Statler and uh, what's, what's it, Waldorf and Statler, the guy from the the two guys the from Muppets, the Muppets. Yeah. yeah, he looked like that guy, like Statler. And he was calling technicals and kind of running the show, and uh, he was sort of doing it from above. So um, to anybody who buys that DVD and a few parents were like, oh, yeah, I'd like to buy this, my sincerest apologies. I don't know what that's going to say over 90 minutes of me just sitting there going off. The first two minutes of the game, there's nothing on there because they didn't do, this is the only game I've been to, they didn't even do an introduction of the kids and the numbers. They just walked out and of course the game's in a cafeteria in Derryfield. so the whole thing is Rob Bradley tried to come over to talk to me during the JV game and it took him 10 minutes to get there because he has to wait till there's a break in the action to walk along the course like he's walking on like a tightrope or something like that but we'll get to all that stuff but I have a little I was starting this with a riddle you ready the little and there are a lot of coaches that listen to this program you ready for this I'm, I'm serious. ready for it okay I'm gonna give you a scenario and you tell me how it could have possibly happened i'm gonna tell you this this happened and i'm gonna ask you a question yeah the scoreboard we will get to that at yeah, some yeah, point yeah. okay i am the scoreboard i don't know if you just it. forgot it you're all fired up i'm and like, staring at it speak to me this is what we're gonna start with okay tell me how ready and for coaches out there you ready epping has the ball up for 0.8 seconds left with the ball in their hands point eight seconds, seconds. Point so less eight. than a second they're up by four how can Derryfield possibly get to overtime? The clock because is they stopped. almost did. No. Nope. Well, I mean, the clock is Give stopped me... at point eight. No, so it didn't stop at point eight. It... It's it's running at point eight, and it almost went to overtime. Yeah, tell me how that can possibly happen because it. Well, did. a kid threw the ball in bounds unnecessarily instead of just holding it. Nope. Here's what happened: Colby Wilson had the ball. Point eight seconds left. They came over and kind of half hazardly fouled them. Like the game was over. Derryfield fouls them with 0.6 seconds, down four. Epping runs onto the court, celebrating. Thinking they've won. Thinking they've won. Technical foul on Epping. Colby Wilson goes to the line, hits one. Tyler Zorn goes to the line for Derryfield to shoot the technicals, hits both. They now have the ball back with point six tie. seconds with a three to tie. And the MVPs of the night last night for Derryfield were Bennett Doherty, who was terrific, and the scorekeeper, who was very slow with his finger when he had to put it on there. So they actually got a pass off with point six seconds left before they did well, the Well, tell me about the technical. I mean, is that a bunk technical or what? They called it, yeah. And Sean Young was looking like, are you kidding me? Because it was the end. And some, a lot of times when a guy kind of half, you know, like the half – Foul at the end. You know, they usually just like they wave it off and let's get out of yeah. here. Yeah, no, they didn't. Well, it, excuse me, the game was in Derryfield. This was there was some weird things going on all night. I but mean, anyway, look, it's not like they're rushing the court to get on into a fight or something. Or yeah, you know, they're they're they celebrating. celebrating. Yeah. So anyway, so I get to the scoreboard, but that happened, and I looked at John Kesty and on the play by play, I'm saying <laughs> this game going to overtime. That that was a reality. They had the ball up eight. Excuse me, up four with point eight seconds left, and almost went to overtime. I mean, because th the clock was slow again. Point six, you're not supposed to be able to really. I mean, you got to really catch it and fire, and they got a pass off before the before the you know before they press the button. The guy, the scorekeeper at Derryfield, loves his school. He's he's very loyal. All right, so I'll get to the scoreboard. So that was the game that we covered last night, John Kesty and I. The great John Kesty and I, who may not be speaking at this point, um, but seventy-one sixty-eight, Epping knocks Derryfield from the uh, from the unbeaten's, and uh, a huge game. Colby Wilson, my new favorite player, my new Wooby, uh, had a big game for them, and Jimmy Stanley scored his thousandth career point uh, in that win. So kind of bouncing around the scorebook. Hollis Brookline with a uh, forty-two thirty-eight win over Portsmouth. I kind of saw that one coming. That's a kind of grinded out two grinded out teams, but nice win for Mike Susie's team. That surprises me. I mean. I I saw Hollis Brookline a couple times during the Chick Fil A. They're okay. Yep. I'm not saying they're a bad team, but I think Portsmouth is a good team. Yep. Uh, so I'm just surprised. No, no. Yeah, and I think I think uh, Portsmouth is not. They're not talented enough to just be. You know, to just beat. 
you know, a good team on a on a bad night, and they obviously didn't play that well. So moving around, Trinity was down all night, but they come back and they beat Spalding forty eight forty six. Ryan Otis had a nice game for them, eighteen points uh, from the point guard for Trinity. Carmen G and Petruzzi and Wenyan Gabriel a combined eight points, but Wenyan Gabriel gets the game winner with twenty seconds left. His only field goal game, he had two points in that wow. game. Wow, and that says something about Trinity. Uh, you know, Did good job win. by Otis yeah. stepping up. They can win with those two guys, not even combining for. Double. Yeah. Digits, you know they're going to be real tough to beat, and to be able to come back and win—that's kind of like a, a crusher for Spalding, right there on the verge of a huge upset, and they get it taken away at the end. So, yeah, credit Trinity for coming back, uh, but credit to to Spalding. I know Darian Barry had, a, had another big game. He's Darian a Barry good did. Player. He had twenty-two points for Spalding, so another big game. Uh, Manchester Central uh, rolls really from the beginning over Londonderry, sixty-eight forty-nine. A game that I covered on the Thursday thoughts. Pete Terriers will be. Brett Hansen is on the front page of the Manchester Union leaders. I got to check that out. I Always seen makes that him yet. happy. Uh, Michael Felix with 21 points for Salem, and they beat Keene on the road 54 42. One of those road trips nobody likes to make, but Salem gets with Rob McLaughlin, gets a good win. Dover gets a W. Mike Romps. They are celebrating in Dover this morning 79 73. Mike Wasserman with 30 points, and they beat Nashua North 79 73. I can't figure out Dover for the life of me. They scored 29 30 points one night and 79 to Ten days later, so I, I'd like to hear you know some more about that game from maybe somebody who was there, because on Twitter last night after the game, Jordan Lates from Nashville yeah. North was going off on the officials, oh. basically saying that they got robbed. That by was the a officials. game in Dover. Well, that's interesting. Well, I think yeah. more of it, Jordan, and no offense, you're a great player. They hit 15 threes in the game. Oh right? yeah, Dover hit 15 threes. Tough you're to not gonna those. you're not gonna win many games on the road. Yeah. When uh, the other team hits 15. And good job by the Dover crowd, the student body. I guess that place was packed. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know if it was... The uh, Green Wave? I don't know if it was our boy John Doyle, but I read something on Fosters.com that it was packed, sold out last night. And if your team has no wins... And then you could still sell out For a game. For Nashua North, that's not even yeah, a rivalry. I don't know. It must have been something you know, within the school to get people out there, but good that's, job by that's them. That's good. Yeah, I like to hear that. Uh, Pelham, 66-53 over Oyster River, 24 points from Keith Brown. Matt Regan's team rolls along. Newport beats Messenic, 63-44. Newport is number one in Division Three in the standings. Plymouth comes all the way back. Colin Sullivan... Good little point guard, uh, had 18 points, and Plymouth comes all the way back and beats Wyndham on the road, 58-55. That is a huge win for Plymouth. It just kind of solidifies them as legitimate with that win because uh, Wyndham uh, took Pembroke to the wire a week ago. Uh, Richie Ruffin with 17, and Winnicunit beats Bedford 54-50. These are two teams that I feel like are right about the same level. Bedford can't catch a break. I mean, I don't know if it's they can't catch a break or they can't close, but um, Bedford, I don't know what their record is now, 1-6 maybe, but they... Uh, they they just, might not even make the tournament. Well, they'll make it because they'll beat enough teams would. to get there. Oh, two teams make it. Speaking of not making the tournament, Timberlane loses again, what, 72nd loss in a row. Baseball season's right around the court, fellas. Uh, Nashua South with a 71-52 win. Pete Terrier's alma mater gets the win over Timberlane. Bishop Brady continues to play well. 66-59 over Goffstown. Uh, Joe Marandola and Kyle Gavin had huge games for Bishop Girton. This is a game that Jen Check covered for us, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to see the highlights of this one. 74-73 over Memorial. Um, Cabongo. Gala Kalandi had uh, 27 points, leading the way from Manchester Memorial in that win. Wade Gops back. I was looking at the box score. Right? I don't know. These guys come and go at Memorial. I never know who's playing. Um, I like Wade Gop. Uh, Co Brown gets a nice win on the road, 51-42 over Kennett. That's a good win there. Um, Colebrook 49-48 in the dress rehearsal for Dave Haley and Jen Chick's debut in well, Colebrook. Be next, is that next weekend? Two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks from today. I will not be here. I, Roger Brown hopefully will be filling in for me in this seat, and I'll be up north. Nath with the coaches. And Colbert gets a 49-48 win for Groveton. I got the box score for Groveton, but Buddy Trask hasn't Groveton got me won the game, you're saying? Colbert won 49-48. Okay. okay. Yeah. Littleton 76-42 over Canyon Pittsburgh. Owen Stone with 21 points for Littleton. 11 players score for Trevor Howard's team. Uh, and they're starting to play really well. Zach Bergeron with another good game, 45-37. Were you talking to him about the uh, pronunciation of his name? Clarification. Bergen. Bergen. There's no... Last year, I remember doing the uh, Division Three games uh, at SNU, and they played in the championship game. 
and the kid's name was Bergeon, like B-E-R-G-E-O-N. And everybody, of course, assuming it's Bergeron. And it's a guy whose name is constantly mispronounced, Terrier, not Terrier. Oh, you get so mad about that. No, I'm just saying, well, it's my name. Don't you let, you know, don't you let it ruin, don't you name. let it ruin your morning. It's kind of hard to mess Nash up Haley. Yeah, Nash Southland. It's kind of hard, but so I asked Zach Bergen, I said, how do you pronounce your name? Because I've been calling you Bergeron. I think I've also called you Bergeon. It might be Bergen. And he said it's just like Surgeon, but with a B. So it's Bergen. Pe- and the kid needs to get his name pronounced correctly because he's playing really good basketball. Yeah, PJ Frappier is like his Jerry Maguire. I think he just falls around and rubs his shoulders. He's like, this guy! And he, he, every week he's got his numbers. He had 12 rebounds. He's been terrific. And he's worked really hard with PJ and those guys. So good for them. But Zach gets a, uh, and Campbell gets a win over Prospect Mountain, a team that it, I, it confuses me utterly. But 45-37, they get the win there. Conant, 53-38 over Bo. I don't know what's going on with Conant. I don't know what's going on with Conant. And, and yeah, they won by 15, but they usually win these games by Oh, because they lost on Monday? Two and Zach lost, Burgess yeah. and the Campbell Cougars. They Second did. year in a row, we'll they talk, knock them off. Yeah, we'll talk about that one, but that was that was the biggest upset in any of the four divisions all year long. Uh, rolling on, Shane Bork had a big game for Merrimack, and they rolled over Concord at home, 59-30. Sets up a huge game Monday night, Central Merrimack on Monday night. Pankerton! You're buying in, huh? No, I'm not buying in, but I've got to give him credit. I mean, uh, Luke uh, Rosinski with 27 points. He's having a great year. And they beat Exeter at Exeter. Boy, Exeter is on the skids right now. Yeah, they I'm telling are. you, they're not, you know, I mean, they're okay. But people were talking about them as a top three, four team. Yeah. They're not. I was. I was. Um, and they lose at home to Pinkerton. So, uh, good win there for Rosinski and those guys. Uh, Hopkinton with a really good win. It's hard. It's really hard to go to Mascoma and win. They do it 52-47. I still believe in Dave Chase's team. I still think they're going to be pretty good. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm going to quick. I'm going to be doing uh, Division Four and Division Three midseason snapshots this week. Cool. I right? try to pick who's going to be in the finals, uh, all state, at the halfway point, stuff like that. So wrapping up. Um, Going around a little bit. Lebanon, 86-53 over Milford. They can score some points. Yeah, and Le- Lebanon is just one of my favorite teams I've covered this year. I, just, I like that crew. Guilford, the Golden Eagles. They bring the rat down on Belmont, 69-37. Derek uh, Hamilton, give him a shout-out. He's the coach at Belmont. He's doing a really nice job. He starts four freshmen, and uh, he does a really nice job. They're playing hard, but uh, they're a couple years away, but they'll be fine. But Guilford gets the W. Uh, Berlin, 66-55. Uh, Brad Frenette with a big game for Berlin, 66-55 over Summersworth. We're going to have Lauren Lucas on in about uh, 10 minutes, uh, and that's a good win there for Berlin. Uh, Hunter Crutchmar did not play last night for Summersworth. Um, Newmarket, 57-55. They win it uh, at the buzzer, 57-55 over Wilton. Lineboro, 29 points for Jordan Litz, but Jamie Hayes is coaching his butt off with these guys. <laughs> I saw them on Monday. We'll talk about them in a little bit. A shot at the buzzer in overtime to send it to our oh, yeah. shot at Half the board. buzzer by Jordan Litz yeah. to send it to overtime. And then Sam Leahy with a shot yeah. at the end of overtime to win it. Yeah, 57-55. Very good win for Jamie Hayes. He's doing a really good job. We'll talk about those guys a bit. And the last score, big upset last night. Moltenboro beats Profile 43-33 at Profile. That Profile's first loss of the season. So they're also, like Derry Fields, Knocked from the ranks of unbeaten, so I don't believe there's an unbeaten team in Division Four at this point. But Moltenboro gets a big win. They led the whole way, wire to wire, and they went at 43-33. So is Merrimack still undefeated? No, Merrimack, I think Merrimack lost somebody. Well, we've got to check that out, because that could be a battle of undefeateds in D1 on Monday night. All right, we'll take a timeout, come back. Like Dave said, we got Lauren Lucas from, from Summersworth coming up in a couple of minutes to talk about that uh, game. His team in general, the Toppers, and the game against Berlin last night. Uh, we've been dying to see Berlin, see how good they are. Yeah, Merrimack 7-0. You don't get a lot of chances to see Berlin uh, unless they come south. Because uh, Lord knows no one wants to drive to Berlin when it's 20 below. It, they, I, don't, I don't think they physically can go north. They're in Canada. <laughs> All right. It is the New Hampshire High School Hoop Show. Pete Terrier, along with Dave Haley, NHSportsPage.com, on News Radio 610 and 96.7. We needed a little more fuel to Dave Haley's fire this morning to get him going. Can I rant about Get one? a little kickstart my heart. Can I rant about something real quick? Yeah. Thank you. Getting these gas pumps that ask you five questions before you can get the gas, 
What's the deal? It's, oh, it's awful. It's so cold Dick, out, too. Shannon. It's three degrees out, and it's like, do you want a car wash? No. No, no because it's three degrees out. <laughs> do, up, do you have a rewards card? No. I ended up putting do like you want a re- 20 bucks in my car because I'm like, I can't stand here anymore. I'll fill it later. Thank you, Shannon. It's like I'm going on a date with this thing. It's like, oh, your brother's an architect? That's great. Oh, your sister has kids? Can I see pictures? I mean, it's like, I just want to get gas. It, it, I'm sitting there in Auburn today, and it figures Candia has the worst, and of course, that's where my ex-wife lives. So it's like almost like it's it has to be preordained that that gas tank, that gas tank literally is like, uh, do you have a rewards card? Would you like to get a car wash? Uh, do you want a receipt? Did you get good grades in high school? Do you call your mom once a week? It's like, can I just get some gas? I had a bad experience at a gas station yesterday while we're on the subject. You ever get one of those wicked slow pumps where it's like, you know, a sundial to, yeah. to, to, to total up your, yeah. I mean, I sat there and I was like, man, this is taking forever. And I got, 0.8 gallons so i just shut it down and then i went to another one yeah and i got along. a real you know yeah and shannon weighs like 90 pounds you can't stick her out there in the three degree <laughs> weather she's gonna die it's like a popsicle was somebody on the other side of the pump while you're pumping your gas no oh because sometimes i notice if like both sides are being used it goes a little bit slower so i was wondering if that was the case but that's why i was fired i guess up it was just a down. slow pump I was fired up about that, and then I walked in, and nobody tr- opened the door because it's company policy. That's right, company policy. All right, it's fine. I'm over it. I'm over here. it. I, I wanted to talk about the uh, the point eight seconds too. So, all right, go ahead. Now I'm done. I'm done ranting. All, all right. right. So you saw Division Four basketball last night. Uh, Good your game. first look at D four this year? No, no. I've what been other to, D four games did you see this I, year? Monday night, I was at Newmarket Pittsfield. Okay. Yeah, and I've seen uh, I've seen a couple games. So uh, tell me what you think is the biggest difference between D four and D one. You've seen last Sunday you were at Trinity Central, the the pinnacle yeah. of D one. Yes. And then last night you were at Epping New uh, Epping Dairyfield, yeah. the pinnacle of D four. Biggest difference. Well, biggest. There's so many. Depth is huge. Uh, because the guys who come off, Mike Pletsis would be a superstar in Division Four, and so would Nick Macris, um, and they don't even start for Central. Um, size, obviously, although Dairyfield is just as big as a lot of Division One teams. They're probably bigger than Central. Yeah, they're big. Uh, it just comes down to depth. It, you know, somebody said a million years ago to me, they said the best player in, on a Division Four team can play in Division One. The best two or three players on a Division Three team can play in Division One, and it goes like the top four Division Two guys can play. It go. It's just depth. You know, it's just those guys. And Jimmy someone, Stanley, yeah. would he start for either Central or Trinity? No. Okay. He wouldn't start. He would not necessarily. He might start for Trinity, um, but he would play. And so he would Nick be a, Macris he, is Jimmy Stanley well, if he's on Epping. Well, he, well, let me go back. Or to, if he's on Dairyfield. No, of no, no. He's better than he's better than Nick Macris. He's here's the thing. You brought up Central. It's a very good question. But I, first thing, okay. First thing that goes in my head. Who's he starting over? Brett Hansen or John Martin? Right. Neither one of those guys. Joey Martin's a shooter. Jimmy Stanley's not a shooter. He's a guy who slashes, gets he's a good rebounder. Power forward. Yeah, he's a very good player. But I mean, you you mentioned the team has two of the best forwards in the state. I mean, when I do all state picks, I mean Brett Hansen and, and John Martin might both be first team. I mean, so it's a tough. Ex- that's why I kind of thought about Trinity. He might start for Trinity. He's he's good. He's legitimately a good player. Um, both teams are really really good. I just think I walked out of there thinking, first of all, Larvey Roger Larvey's not playing. He's got the flu. He's been out all season long. He's had the flu all season long. No, he had an ankle injury. He just started to come back, and now he's sick again. But you know what? How do I phrase this? He's, I'm going to be careful here. He's, uh, they're, they're fine moving on right now without him. I think they're fine. I don't think they miss him at all. I'm going to say that. And I think he'll help them a lot when he comes back. He's capable. I don't think he's a kid that loves basketball. That's my opinion. I think he's a very nice kid, a very good golfer, and I'm sure that he, you know, he's going to do very well. But I don't think the kid loves basketball that much, and I think he's just sort of big. And his parents don't want him to play, and he plays. So Dairyfield is moving on without him, and they got a good enough core. Rob Rizos, um, or Rizos, the point guard for Dairyfield, the junior, I really like a lot. He's really, really a good, heady little point guard. And Bennett Doherty was terrific last night. Dairyfield is very, very good. The Anderson brothers, I like them. Yeah, Max and Sam. Sam is yeah. Sam's a little raw, but he's a good player. Max is is you've seen him play. He's a very good player. Um, I like them a lot. And uh, I really left there feeling like Sean Young, who's a very energetic, positive, 
I mean, he's he's the Jim Mulvey. The shirt is like untucked by you know the first three minute timeout. He's all you know, everything's you know all over the place. Like he just walked out of a dryer. He is a really good. I feel like he's a really good uh, fit for this team. They're they're a very high strung emotional team, and he sort of is able to rein him in. And like they're hugging him after the game and jumping on him, and they have fun with him. They re- they listen to him. They like him, you know. And 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 he does. He's done a really nice job. So I'm happy for him because he's a terrific guy, and um, I feel like it's a good fit. Epping's Epping's back, you know. They, last year, the whole thing with that crew was, and I wrote about it was. That they, no one thought, they thought, people thought they would fold when it came down to it. People thought something would happen off the court to screw up their season. And he, to his credit, I wrote about this preview, went in there on day one and said, here's what everyone's saying about you. So you want to make it true or you want to change it? It's up to you today. Like I'm Put it on the you. kids. Yeah, he did. And he's and he said, I'll help you. I'll do it. And he's done that. Now, they got a ways to go, but that's a terrific win last night. And they deserve all the credit. It was a lot of fun. I uh, People should watch the video. Um, they can mock me, laugh at me, and shake their head at me for my play-by-play. But uh, it was a lot of fun. All right, we'll take a timeout. Come back with uh, Lauren Lucas uh, from the Summersworth Toppers championship winning coach with a team this year that is not quite a championship caliber as you wrote about in your Thursday thoughts on nhsportspage.com earlier this week. Quick timeout. It is the New Hampshire High School Hoop Show, News Radio 610 and 967. Well, certainly one of the iron men of coaching in New Hampshire high school basketball, Lauren Lucas, the head coach of the Summersworth Toppers. You got to love being called an iron man, right coach? Iron Man, yeah, Iron Man. <laughs> I definitely don't ever want to run an Iron Man. I know that. <laughs> yeah, those are a little bit difficult. I remember watching those on uh, ABC's Wide World of Sports, and they started off with what a two-mile swim, and then you got to you know, bike 112 miles and finish it up with a marathon. Why not? You know, right, right. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to drive that. No mind run it. <laughs> well, it's certainly uh, kind of an Ironman contest when you're playing the the uh, team from Berlin who comes down and beats your team last night, uh, 66-55, the final score, I believe, uh, if I remember correct from what Dave read earlier. Uh, those guys are a very, very tough team, and we were talking on the show earlier that people don't get a lot of chance to see those guys just because of where they're located in the state. So when they do come down, do you think that there's a lot of people from the Summersworth community and the Seacoast that want to get a chance to take a look at these guys and see what they're all about yeah absolutely i mean um you know they, they they're always well coached they're always um you know they work hard but but yeah you're, you're right i mean high school fans around the area want to find out um so yeah we had, yeah, we had a good crowd there last night um found out we found out a lot about our team last night you know we, you're, we're down 15 Going into the half, um, really weren't playing very well. We only scored 15 points, and you know, challenged the kids. You know, challenged the kids. They were getting pushed around. They were they were looking nervous out there, and you know, they came back and and made it a game. And you know, it was all the way all the way to the end. You know, they hit their free throws at the end, and you know. Was really proud of my kids and how hard they fought. And you know, being a young team, but, you know, I, I really feel like last night was a big step for us. Do you, Lauren? Do you feel like um, you've got to stay on top of them after something like that because it's a step forward? And I've sort of. Uh, I don't want to say resign myself, but with you guys, I feel like you're going to win games that I'm going to say, oh, Lauren, nice win. And then you're going to lose games. I'm like, Lauren, what happened? You know, and it's not you. It's you got a young team, and it's just, you know, you beat Belmont by 18, and then, you know, three weeks later you lose to them, and I'm sure if you play them the next night you win. But I know that you've gone back to a lot of teaching with these guys, a lot of basics, and, you know, whereas with that team with Pat Lavin and Shatinsky and, and Matt Fossey, you were more game planning for the other team. But do you feel like after after last night, all right, we took a positive step, but I've got to stay on these kids because they are young, and you know, it, it, you constantly need to kind of monitor where they're at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you know, we 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 don't focus on wins and losses, or we don't figure. You know, uh, we talk about taking positive steps every day, and you know, we talk about it was today's practice a, a positive step. Um, and you know, after the game last night, I. I that exactly that day. I said, you know, if we come in here on on Sunday and have a lousy practice, today really didn't mean.
mean that much. So, you know, you could, could you did take a positive step this up, you know, in the second half. But we have to get to the point where we can have a complete practice where it's great. And then, and then that obviously translates to games. And, and that's been our biggest, you know, these young kids don't realize, you know, playing a team like Berlin, playing anybody, you know, at the varsity level, that you have to come out ready to go. And that's probably been the toughest thing to teach these kids. Um, but, you know, they're learning the hard way. I, like you said, you know, some of the losses that we've had. But, you know, we're talk- we keep talking about March. You know, that's our focus right now is, is March and being ready in March, um, you know, and being, being a lot more solid at that point. That's Lauren Lucas, head coach of the Summers Wear Toppers. His team now 4-3 and three in D3 after last night's uh, loss, an 11-point loss at home against Berlin. Good game uh, by uh, Chase Ennis and Elijah DeJoy, each uh, putting up 15 points for you guys. Coming off the bench, Zach Hamilton, uh, 13 in the game. Jeremy Jakes, uh, almost a double-double, 8 points. 10 boards you guys uh play again on monday against uh one of those teams that 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 dave always likes to talk about big rivalry in d3 summersworth and farmington i want to ask you about something that happened in your league on monday night all year long and seemingly every year we're always talking about conant and how dominant they are and unbeatable you know they seem and then they, for the second year in a row, lose a game to Campbell, which I think might have raised a lot of eyebrows. When you saw that score and got word of that final, what was going through your mind? Um, you know, I, I guess it's, it's the game of basketball. You know, I'm one game, anybody can beat anyone. Um, and, you know, Campbell did, did a nice job with, uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, handling the pressure. And if you get past the pressure... Um, you know, it, it, you do have a shot if you can handle the pressure a little bit. Um, but you know, I, I think like anybody, I, I'm sure Eric. You know, a loss sometimes is probably good. You know, everybody, everybody's telling you, telling you know, I'm sure they read all the articles and read everything as well. And, you know, I, having a team like that a few years ago, you know, a loss to Berlin for us. Um, you know, three years ago, that's why we won the state championship. If we don't lose to Berlin during the regular season, we, you know, those kids thought they were the greatest thing in the world until that loss. And then it kind of was a little wake up call. Oh, maybe, maybe coach does know what he's talking about, you know, in certain situations. What what would you say, Lauren, is the personality of this team? You know, uh, what, what would you say? I mean, I know it's developing as it goes, but now we're almost to the halfway point. What would you, what do you, what do you see, especially after last night coming off? You know, kind of a po- I mean, a loss, but a positive night for you guys. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, we're starting to realize. You know, you mentioned the chance and uh, Elijah. I mean, scoring fifteen off the bench. Um, I think you know. The kids are starting to realize that, um, you know, they have to be able um, to work and get to that point where they're ready for, ready for games. And both of those kids, um, you know, have, have had their struggles throughout the year, um, but they're they're coming around. And, and I think the personality is that, you know, they're understanding that they have to be able to play solid defense and focus on that and then come down and, and attack on, on a fast break. Um, but really, the toughest part has been getting them to run an offense, to be quite honest. So, um, you know, I, it, it's building. Uh, you know, I, some days I feel like, I, I, like you talked about earlier, that I have a really good feel about what their personality was. I don't really know what their personality is, but, um, you know, it's just the type of team it is. Yeah, I was talking to, I was texting with Eric Saucier after your game uh, that I covered against uh, Prospect Mountain a couple weeks ago, and we were, it kind of ties into a game I covered on Monday night. It was at Newmarket, and Jamie Hayes is coaching his butt off with those guys, and he's got a lot of guys on his team. They work hard. They seem like really good kids. They follow his instruction to the T, but they have 
Some of them, they just don't have basketball sense. To me, they look like baseball players or soccer players who are playing basketball. And there was one instance where he had a kid who went across the lane to go set a screen, and he's looking for someone to screen. I'm watching the play saying, by the way, if you turn around and look, nobody's guarding you, and you're under the basket, and the kid could have been wide open for a layup, but he didn't have the sense, the basketball sense, to kind of understand that nobody was covering him. So, like, they're almost robotic. Do you do you sort of do you see those things here and there with, with your team, and do you sort of also in the other side? See, I remember you mentioned a kid to me, um, Vincent Loho, who was a young player for you, where you said, yeah, he's starting to get the sense of it as a young guy. Like, you know, those are basketball, you know, p- basketball players realize those things. Basketball players turn around and, and call for the ball and get an open lamp, where kids that don't quite get it yet, you know, are just schematically running the play you call. Are you seeing that with your Do you see a lot of those in good and bad with this team? Yeah, I do. I, and, you know, it's actually the younger kids. It's kind of funny that you mentioned, you know, Vincent Lowe and then Chance Enos. Um, they actually, they, you know, a ball goes, you know, starts getting moved up the floor. And, you know, like last night, Chance takes off, you know, and he gets a wide open layup. It's just, well, great. You know, instead of, oh, the ball's there. You know, I'm constantly talking about, like you mentioned, some of these, you know, and, and there are, we do have, you know, at Division Three, you have those kids that do play three sports. Um, you know, and basketball isn't their number one. Um, you know, they, sometimes they play it like chess, where the ball gets passed. And yeah. like, oh, now I have to go over there. <laughs> and and, and that, that, you know, that does lead to struggles. Um, you know, and for us, you know, Hunter Chris Barr has been hurt. Um, you know, he didn't play last night. Um, and, you know, he, he's, he's a baseball guy, but, you know, brings such a toughness to us underneath the basket. Um, you know, so him coming along, hopefully, you know, hopefully he'll be able to go for us on Monday. Um, you know, will be big for us as well. Well, Coach, we really appreciate the time. I just want to look ahead on the schedule just for one second here. The eve of Valentine's Day should be a lovely night in the Lakes region when Dave Haley's Guilford Golden <laughs> Eagles welcome your Summer's Worth Toppers into town. It's the only game I, vote, I root against you, Lauren. You know that, buddy. <laughs> Is he going to roll out the red carpet for you? That. You know, maybe dinner at uh, mom and pop's house after the game or something. If you guys, sure. uh, if you guys let Guilford win that game, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we never let anybody win anything, and I think Guilford can, can attest to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, we'd love to have a nice, nice gay dinner over at the Healy's. Yeah, pa- absolutely. Patrick's Pub. Uh, I'll take it right over, Lauren. After the game, get the bus driver the directions home, and I'll take care of you, buddy. <laughs> hey, coach. Yeah, yeah I'll do real well. Bring a bunch of high school kids to the pub. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be I'll be coaching. I won't be an Iron Man anymore. Yeah, uh, somewhere else. <laughs> You'll be a paper tiger then. Yeah, <laughs> coach. We really appreciate the time. Uh, good luck uh, over the next uh, month or so as this thing uh, heads towards March. Uh, we know Summersworth is going to be one of those tournament teams, and I think uh, a team that no one's going to want to see in that first round. So we we appreciate the time on a Saturday morning, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right, Pete. Thanks, Dave. Take All right, care. Lauren Lucas from Summersworth, uh, his team on the short end of one against Berlin, but that's nothing to be uh, depressed about. That's a good basketball team, the Mountaineers. And they got more Arsenals up there, oh, Levi Arsenal. Levi. It's only you sophomore, know. and there's another one coming in eighth grade. Oh, boy. I know. It's unbelievable. Boy. Don Picard. Oh. Are we having him on at some yeah, point? Yeah, I've been trying to have him on. He's He coaches his daughter's like fourth grade team uh, or something like that. Okay. So he, uh, I talk to him all the time because we're doing fundraising with him, neighborhood fundraising, and, um, and by by the way, if anyone needs fundraising for your spring sports, neighborhoodfundraising.com. But, um, yeah, Don Picard, we're going to definitely have him on. Lauren is, I mean, obviously you can tell I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with Lauren. He is, I think, one of the best coaches in the state. I mean, he is a terrific coach. And uh, when he has the pieces, and he will, he's got some young talent there. They're going to be, I mean, they're in it every year. But he's very, one thing you notice with coaches when you talk to a lot of them is the guys that they really respect. And Lauren is a guy that his um, – his fellow coaches really, really have a lot of respect for. They they feel like he's one of the best. 
Quick timeout, come back, we'll wrap up the show. The New Hampshire High School Hoop Show, Pete Terrier, along with Dave Haley, nhsportspage.com. I have been alerted that the videos from both of our games of the week on uh. the website are up. You got Bishop Girton and Memorial, a game that went down to the wire, a D1 battle, and then a D4 game, which was also very interesting, especially the ending. And- it was Derryfield and Epping, Epping, knocking Derryfield off from the ranks of Jimmy, the unbeaten. Jimmy Stanley's 1,000 point. One quick shout-out, Eric Gendron uh, got his 1,000 point this week, too, so 2,000 point score. No, make it three, because Isaiah Prince out of Monadnock oh, Regional High School there you go. got 1,000 last night as well at home. So Good Stanley him. got his on the road. Gendron got his at home. Always nice to, to, to do it in front of the, the home crowd. Quick timeout. We'll come back, wrap up the show. News Radio 610-967. Heading up towards the top of the hour at 9 o'clock. Uh, you know what? I hate this week. It's the bye week between the Super Bowl, and I hate it even worse because yeah, the Patriots aren't on. I was depressed a little bit. I mean, look, obviously that game on Sunday, the Patriots were outplayed. I mean, the better team won that game. Denver was able to stop New England from doing what they wanted to do. And they. I remember I listened to the show, I think on Monday, when I was just sitting around the house. I didn't have to work. And I listened to the show that we did, and we did a little segment. You said the Broncos were going to win. I gave you a little crap. You were right. I said the Patriots need to pass to set up the run, and if Denver doesn't stack the box and stop that running game, LeGarrette Blunt, and force the Patriots to beat them with the lack of receiving weapons that they have, they're stupid and they don't deserve to win. Well, Denver did exactly that. They won. Patriots couldn't stop Peyton Manning. I think the Denver Broncos are going to win the Super Bowl next week. I don't think Seattle, uh, and if the weather is okay, I mean, if it's like, you know, snowing or whatever, all bets are off. Well, what's okay? What do you define as okay? It's not be- snowing, not freezing rain. It's going to be 25 degrees. So what? If it's if it's like 25 degrees and calm, I think that they can get by with that, Denver can. I think Seattle's going. You know, well, that's okay. You know, I, I think that Seattle has a chance. <laughs> Thank you. I think that, I'm glad that, that's okay. I, I think they have a chance. And I know that my, my side of the family on my wife's side isn't too happy about that because they're all out in Seattle and they're crazy Seahawks fans. So I'm glad for them. Uh, but I'm, no, I'm not depressed about the Patriots losing. But you know what? Uh, they got beat by a better team and there's nothing you can say. As far as what Bill Belichick did in his press conference going after Wes Welker, he is a, such a sore loser. It it, it just kind of shows you that that thing was from the beginning, and I mean this goes back to free agency, personal between those yeah. two. There was something very personal between those two guys. He does not like what what Wes, Wal- Wes Welker obviously just did something, and 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 it, I'm not saying it's Wes Welker's fault at all. He seems like a great guy. I, I'm just saying like it was it was personal with the whole you know that was just a very strange thing the Amendola signing and you know all of that and listen they were seven million my thing with the Patriots they were seven million dollars under the cap last year come on uh, come on go get Larry Fitzgerald go get a wide receiver go get somebody you could have got Greg Jennings go get somebody don't tell me Aaron Dobson is the answer I mean come on go spend some money on somebody for Tom Brady he's going to be gone and my god we're going to have to sit there and watch Ryan Mallett you know in four years or whatever it's, it's going to be terrifying so when he's still playing go get somebody for him no I agree that's my rant I agree I mean don't get me started on gas pumps again either <laughs> Dude, like in 2007 that off season when they blew that big lead against uh, Peyton Manning and the Colts in yeah. that 2006 yes. championship game Th- they went out and they got Welker yeah, and but, they got Randy Moss but that's one that they gave away that was the fourth Super Bowl year. They would have played Rex Grossman in the Super Bowl. Oh, I know Bowl, they would have won. And they that wouldn't Super Bowl. spend money on Deion Branch. So on third and seven, when they needed it, they had nobody to throw to. Indianapolis got the ball back and they lost. That was your fourth Super Bowl right there. Yeah. And they blew it because they wouldn't spend money. And it's been ten years since they've won one. Wow. Oh, you know that's crazy. And I don't think that they've been a disappointment over the last ten years. They've been in two Super Bowls and could have won both of them. But uh, and they've been very, very good. So, look, we just want uh, we want them to get another kick at the can with Tom Brady around over the next two, three years, and let's hope they can do it. All right, that's all the time we have. Uh, video of the show is going to be posted at some point tomorrow on nhsportspage.com. John Kesty in here filming it. Uh, for Shannon Locanti, our producer, thanks to Lauren Lucas from Summersworth. For Dave
Haley. My name's Pete Terrier. Enjoy the bye week. One more happy birthday to my son, Zach, who turned six today.